This is so exciting for me. It's exciting for me. No, it's exciting for me. <laughs> you guys, if you haven't recognized the voice yet, the voice of our generation. <laughs> it's yes. Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson's here. This is so cool for me. Um, I have recently, like, just for fun, binging New Girl again, like, as we fun. speak. Yeah. Oh, what uh, what year, what part of the show are you on? I'm on season two, I think, now. I think uh, season two was our strongest. Really? In what way? Like, yeah. in what way? Uh, I think season one was great. We just kind of really launched it. There was a lot cooking. And then season two, I felt like all the characters, myself, Lamorne, everybody kind of knew what we were finally doing. And I felt like uh, it was just firing on all cylinders. I I don't know why, because there is so much to watch and I have so much to watch. But I was like, I need to have that like feel good show of like in between, you know, in between yeah. when you watch like the shows that you have to, you know, really watch. Right. And I love it. I just love New, New Girl so much. Um, my sisters are so jealous. They're not here today. The girl that works with me is so jealous she's not here today. So just so you know, you're very, you're a very popular man. All right, Brian, in your circle, I appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, listen, and self-reliance, we'll talk about it all, but it's a big, it's a big year for you. Um, Thanks. How are you? How was the premiere? Is it a party? The, it was fun. We did. I decided to do a party rather than a premiere. Uh, Hulu was generous enough to say they had started putting a premiere together. And I feel like I am a. have done this game a lot and I feel like it's repetitive and you do the same stuff. And let's be honest, some of it gets a little boring. Uh -huh. And I thought we all are going to watch this on Hulu when it comes out. So why get together in some downtown theater where we're all wearing suits? Hear me thank only the people who worked on it. The rest of the people are there. Uh, then watch the movie, then do the slow walk from there, or everybody gets in a goofy town car, go to the premiere, wait in another line for the red carpet to party for 45 minutes and go home. I said, how about put all the money into a big party at the bar La Cita, where the movie takes place, that bar where we all go to, and I go like, let's just have a night. And they had an open bar for four hours. Uh, the whole cast came out. Zoe came out, which was really cool. Uh, my buddy Bert Kreischer came out. I did his pod that day, and it was just a blast. It was like a, it was like a really fun hang to see a bunch of people on all the screens. They were showing the movie, and everybody had gotten a link. So if they said they hadn't watched it yet, I'm like, who cares? You'll watch it when you watch it. Watch it in five years. Just watch it at some point. I'm obsessed because I feel like people, you know, we see premieres as like lovers of pop culture. A lot of these the people mm -hmm. that listen to this podcast are. And it does. It looks so glam. It looks so, you know, you see the celebs, they're getting interviewed. Yes. You see the stuff. Like, as I've been invited to these things, right? And like when you get the breakdown, you really don't yes. want to go because no. it's the, the, you wait online. I'm sure, like, mm -hmm. you know, it depends on the hierarchy, but there Not, is a line. Where I'm at, where I'm at in that hierarchy is my ass is waiting in lines. <laughs> 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 a lot of lines. You wait on lines to like get on this carpet. And then, like all the things, and I mean, hair and makeup for the women. Thing. The the for men, men too. Groomers, what do you mean for women? Groomers, for men too, right? The whole thing, and it's a lot of effort. And listen, if you're really desperate for a Getty pick, you might go. Yes. You know, so here's what it is. Yeah. So here's what I really. So think I'm obsessed it is. that you yeah. did that, and yeah. that's I would go. But I think I I wish I would have uh, invited you had we done this first. It was a genuinely you fun did night, but here's you what, did invite me. Why didn't you forgetting. come then? Because I live in New York, you forgetful. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We forgetful. DM sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Look, there's been a lot. There's been a lot cooking. <laughs> I know, I know. There's been a lot cooking. There's been a lot cooking. Yeah. But no, here's but what I will so say cool. about those those red carpets and all that madness. Yeah. Uh, what I realized as I've been in this game for a bit is some people pretend not to like it and they do really like it. And for that, it's awesome. And I don't even have judgment. I'm not even thinking like, I'm not sitting at my table at the cafeteria being like, your table's lame. Whatever. It's great. But there are way more guys that I did not expect who will act like, dude, I'm just an actor. And then I'll see a photo shoot with them. And I'm like, are you in man panties and like an oiled up shirt? And they love it. And I'm like, well, good. No one's forcing you to do it. And when you first start, you get opportunities. I did a photo shoot once where 
I thought it was just press. And then they had like nine different pair of tight pants for me. And I'm like, I think you've got this wrong. I'm not, a, I'm not into fashion. I'm trying to do one thing and it's not all things. And so red carpets, I'm like, I, this has nothing to do with me. Those big premiere nights, they have nothing to do with me. And as I get older, I'm trying to find ways to avoid all the stuff that sucks the energy from me rather than, you know, just doing everything because that's what you're supposed to. I'm like, there's no supposed to. Nobody cares. We won't see you in like the front row of men's spring 24 <laughs> Louis Vuitton fashion yeah. show in Paris. Yeah, with shower shoes on, <laughs> uh, pants I've wear to everything in the same button down going like, hmm. Wait, so it makes sense <laughs> now that you, you're 45, you yeah. know who you are, you know what you want. And you have the power that you can make this happen, which is amazing. It seems though like you were always like this. So how did you navigate that when you were younger yeah. and having the success? How were you convinced to like do all the things? Well, well, a lot of people have been disappointed in me at every phase of my career. <laughs> you want a, a gross image? Yeah. Imagine I am 45. It feels right. I was also this at 10. <laughs> And if that doesn't make you feel a little barfy, you're not listening. I was the same guy on like a little league baseball field being like, the practices are insane. It doesn't make sense. We all know how to play our position. Well, none of us are going to be pros. Everybody chill out. <laughs> what are we talking about drills? Oh I mean, here's God. the drill. Throw the pitch. And if I, if I don't feel it, I got an air. We're going to move on. And then as you get older, you go like 45 makes sense. 60 is going to make a lot of sense. Oh, you, you see it. You see it at 60. I, I just feel like, because then at 60, right now I'm allowed to pass on a lot. And people go like, makes sense. He's 45. At 60, you go, I'm sure he's in back pain. <laughs> Why didn't he stand up to greet us when we came? And you just go like this. Really dear friends you haven't seen in 10 years. You just go, hey, how you doing? You're not even going to get up? Uh, I feel like you have more Nick in you than the other characters have their characters. Like from New, New Girl in them. Do you agree with that? I don't know that? if that's true. I really? don't know. Who has more? I all morning I'm texting with Lamorne. Yeah, a Lamorne. His ass is more. his ass is Winston. <laughs> <laughs> when I text with uh, Max, yeah, I'm not I'm not texting with Max, a very serious guy. It'll go. He'll text. I did a photo shoot for uh, something. Uh, I think it was Hollywood Reporter, and I forgot it was that day. And they came to my backyard because I built a little uh, cabin in my backyard and. One of the reasons I built is I get to do press there, right? So if I have a meeting, rather than sit at like the Soho house, I'm like, pass. Come to my weird backyard Soho house and I'll give you coffee. <laughs> Wait, is it this where you're sitting now? No, this is the old master uh, closet that I turned into a little podcast office. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, and, make, so you make- And it's cool. And it's cool. And it has different lighting. So you're kind of like yeah. Kim Kardashian- that's thank you. You're, you're about the hundredth person that said that on this press tour. Because everyone goes to them, you know, in Calabasas. They don't go to right. the press. The press comes yeah, to yeah. them, you know. Yeah. So I've been described as uh, a Kardashian <laughs> since I got into this goddamn game back in 2012. Okay, I walked wait. at least for my first big audition. They go like this. Chloe, Kim or uh, the young one. And I went like Jake. And they went like, oh, my God, Jake Kardashian. And I go, no. <laughs> so, I mean, there is a connection. So, OK, the Hollywood Reporter Max story, you bring them. To so your I did a photo shoot mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm just wearing the same goofy button down in pants. I'm always wearing like this. And I wasn't wearing shoes. Uh, it was not a lot of thought between the photographer and myself. We just kind of did it. Uh, I didn't look right. Uh, the photographer did a wonderful job. Everyone was great. I should have had shoes on. But it was my choice. I said, like, they, she said, like, do you want to grab some shoes? And I'm like, no, I think I'm good. Wait, First they didn't thing, bring, even, like, a stylist or something, though? No, so there's been a woman, I've uh, Annie, who I've worked with before. Um, but it's, it's sometimes they cover it, sometimes they don't. If they don't cover it, I'm not covering a stylist to put clothes on me. I've got a drawer full of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and let's be honest, I have pant, singular. Yeah, and you have pants. And, so no and shoes. I know, and the pant, I got two pair of pant that work for press, and I never wear them out. Are they so, chinos? Are they like slacks? They're like are they blue slacks? slacks. They're, they're blue slacks. slacks. So yeah, question, nice. 
the no yeah. shoes decision. Did yeah. you have a thought? Was it only for comfort or were you like, this will look kind of like earthy and like, you cool. know, I, uh, I'm a very big comfort hound mm. and, uh, I'm not, I mean, I'll tell you right now, let's cut, let's cut the shit. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Oh yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> I mean, look, we're both living in a world of comfort. <laughs> yeah. And so when it started, I thought I could throw shoes on, but I'm like, but it is, it's fine. It's cool. No shoes is cool too. What am I going to throw a pair of Clarks on? It's the same Clarks I wear all the time. I just did a, a Kimmel and even Michael Angarano, a friend wrote and he goes, uh, after I did the appearance, I get a text and I thought like, oh, I guess I did good. And Angarano writes, you've had those same Clarks for 15 years, man. Get new boots. Clarks, but, they're like Clarks. comfortable. Clarks are comfortable. They're dressed comfortable. Those are just like my slacks and my button downs. They work. Okay. But they go so in the, before oh. I even knew the press was out, I get a text from Max Greenfield with me, him and Damon on it. And it's photos of the thing and my feet. And he's like, you look terrible. Why aren't you wearing shoes? And it's just all Schmidt. He's like, what a bad, you could not look worse. Uh, you do not look as cool as you think you do. You don't look like a mountain man. You look like a homeless guy in front of a shed. <laughs> They got that plaid shirt, Jake. It's not fitting you the way you explained it. I was like, what am I, an episode uh, 17? Stop so it. I was like, feel it between yourselves. You're saying, too, like your character. Well, it's the bits we all do together. So mm -hmm. in our real life, we're all very different. But when we step into this arena of like the bits and the games and the fun, mm -hmm. we just did too many episodes and know how to make each other laugh too much. So I don't think Schmidt is, Max is like Schmidt around his kids. Uh, I mean, but he when he's texting funny... me, funny things with his daughter during quarantine that were a little schmitty well she might be the star of that damn family yeah yeah yeah. she's a star for sure she yeah. was a star even as a young age she used to come to my trailer and rip on me when she was like five and i'd be like ease up young lady. <laughs> you're right it doesn't smell great in here you're five <laughs> i can't come back <laughs> wait so but how does the style that you have right that is different from a lot of hollywood people in our minds, it's like to make it in Hollywood, you have to be this way. You have to yeah. really want it. You have to die for it. You have to sleep in your yeah. car. Then when you yeah. make it, you have to like look this way, do all the things. And yeah. you give such like the nonchalant, like you said. Yeah, but that, but that's baseball. not true. But that's not true in terms of my work. Mm. So uh, I did have the sleep in your car. I did have the, I believe uh, I will outwork anybody. So in terms of writing, I went to NYU for dramatic writing. Uh, I was never the best writer, but I've written so many scripts and they're all in a folder called Jake's writing on my desktop and they are embarrassing. And if we went premise by premise, it would be the hardest you've ever laughed. Uh, you'll go like, these are some real duds. One thing, but like even <laughs> in terms of the work ethic, sometimes I'll tell you a quick story and it's a true story that um, I believe in hard work and I believe even if you don't have a product, just start grinding because you don't know what's going to happen. So uh, my sister went to the Czech Republic and got these beautiful masks. I was living in New York at the time. I must've been 21, writing all the time, trying to do comedy, not working. Wasn't It wasn't happening. But these masks were gorgeous. It was like this like beautiful, old creepy clown. So one day I was sitting in my apartment. I was up in uh, East Harlem and I was looking at my bank account and I was really near zero. And I thought, you know what? I got an idea. I'm going to take this mask, throw a sports jacket on, grab an umbrella, go down to the subway and just start busking for cash. Just put on a goddamn <laughs> impromptu clown show. This is a true story. Now, I hadn't given it thought above that. And all I thought was worst case scenario, I make a hundred bucks. Right. People just throw quarters in as they go by. So I get down to Times Square. I get on a little corner, uh, under underground. Uh, I know it. I, I know it well. You went yeah. to you went to the right place. I went to the right place. You know, there's like some like folk singer who's cool. <laughs> there's like somebody like banging on garbage drums over there. I'm giving the waves to him like I'm in the community. <laughs> there's like nine eight year old dancers. I'm like, what's up, guys? Let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> yes. You know, some opera, some Broadway singer. I'm like this beautiful voice, Carol. Like, where's my zone? <laughs> I've I find a little corner. I'm making eye contact with the other performers. Like, watch out. The the new kid has arrived on the scene. I'm about to cut in, right? 
You guys got a pizza? There's a new slice for this chubbo. It's mine. Wait, what and year I'm eating is the this? Crust. Can you place me in the year? 2002? 2002. 2001. Okay. Mm -hmm. I put the mask on. Open the umbrella. Never <laughs> once in my life have I taken a mime class. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you see mimes, they all have umbrellas. They, they have some do? props. They do. I, don't know. I hadn't okay. done my homework. Okay. So mask, start... umbrella, sports jacket. Like and I start doing killer. this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Second 15. Yeah. Two older women in their 50s, tough, carrying a bunch of bags with them, use these commuter trains to get to and from jobs they don't want to go to. One of them took offense to what I was doing and yelled, you're scaring me. And I went, <laughs> me? <laughs> and she goes, what the fuck you doing with that mask? You're scaring everybody. And I went like, oh no. She didn't stop. She got louder and louder, stood in front of me, got very confrontational. A small group formed around her yelling at me what are you doing you're scaring us in the mask take the mask off i thought this is the beginning of an audience <laughs> what am i going to do unre uh, un lift up the mask then i won't make any money i'm thinking after this you everyone's going to throw commit. yeah they're going to throw their dollar bills in this is a bad fi 15 minutes but it'll be worth 20 bucks this fucking woman follows me i finally leave she gets on the train harasses me on the train and at a certain point i just go like fine it's over i made no money i went home threw the mask on the ground uh so in terms of my career there's thousands of those but it was always try 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 you work, 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 work. but it was never fashion photo shoots red carpets i was like no it was trying to do this one thing that it was never that that part of it never Allergy. It never interested me. Yeah. My I first was catering when I moved to LA and I did an event for some big agency and all the big stars were there. And I was there, I was one of the caterers serving them stuff. And so my first glimpse of that world was seeing like Vince Vaughn and Robin Williams and Jamie Foxx as I was like giving them like tuna tartare. Yeah. And being like, they all are like their vibe in movies. Oh, okay. I was like, they're holding court. And I'm like watching the movie. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, that's wild, man. And then I thought like, all right, then just do that. Be the thing you're trying to sell. That's amazing. I, I love that you could be who you were and just do your work and succeed that way. Because you were, I mean, you got into NYU mm -hmm. because of a play you wrote in, in high school. It, uh, it, I first went to the University of Iowa. Uh, I went to Iowa. It said it had a great writing program. So I went there. Um, the partying was a bit intense and it got on top of old Jakey J. It's very hard. It's like a frat school. In... It is. I wasn't in a frat, but I lived in a house with like five friends, like five guys and a woman. And we just partied all the time. So I'm like, I got to get out of here or I'm going to be 350 pounds <laughs> with a with a pack of merits in my pocket going Ooh, like. Merits. I bought those. Sure, I bought sure. them. Because a soft pack of, of merits. Um... I bought them because I was so influenced. This just goes to show you guys, we really get influenced by like TV and movies. Facts. I bought them because that's what Carrie Bradshaw smoked in Sex and the really? City. I went out and bought, I was smoking something else. Something. And how, like how old were you when you first started smoking? But I'm in New York. Don't forget. So right. what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. I, I take back my question. So five, six? <laughs> Twelve, I think. Oh, my I God. I think I tried my first. But you know what? I, I'm not uh, promoting this, but I will say uh, trying things young sometimes is better. Because bad advice. You get bad advice. <laughs> first of all, it. no, we need... This you is where you need studios and PR people to go like, don't... <laughs> So here's what I'm going to say about things like acid, like do it at seven, because then you'll be like, that shit's insane. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, uh, so when did you, uh, when did you decide to start doing this? And when did you pop? Wait, Jake, what do you think this uh, is? A two way I got a mic. I got a, I got a mic in front of me too. You think it's a two way street? You're confused. 
<laughs> you are confused. I, I've been confused okay. since 1978 when I came out of my mother's body, and I'm going to be confused until they put me back in the earth. But I love Just it. Just keep you know, talking. You know what I was thinking, though, as you were uh, saying, like, the parts of this industry that you love and don't love, podcasting yes. is so for you then. Yes, like, you must really be fun. thrilled about this medium, you know? Yes. Well, well, like, that's not why only I, yours, yes. you have your own podcast, but also I feel like going on them, you could be at home, you could be shoeless, You're no Clarks, no Slacks. You're not wrong. You're not like, wrong. This is for you. So, you know, well, that's why I was kind of going to you on it because when you talk about the pressures and when I started, when I got into the business, none of this worked. There was no streaming, you know, to date myself and like, uh, it was the big networks and cable and movies. There were only X amount. So there were only a few spots you could like fit into and you tried to fit into those very bad. And as the game has changed, it's exploded. So, you know, press for this movie self-reliance. This was the first time I'm like, I'm way more interested in doing podcasts than I'm doing in the old traditional, you know, tours. This was the first trip I didn't go to. Uh, do like the New York section or fly out to other cities to do like local affiliates. Because I'm like, I don't think I have to. I think you can just chat to people in long form. Well, let's just also say yeah, you did right because uh, it's at number one, self-reliance uh, on Hulu. Number one at Hulu, which is really exciting. I mean, pretty exciting. Pretty and exciting. The Rotten Tomatoes scores. I know I'm such a loser, but I do look at yeah. that like for yeah. me as a watcher. Yeah. And seven above like 82, it's yeah. too much for me. Do you know what I mean? Like it becomes like <laughs> you, you've played the game too well. You've like, kissed like, a little bit too much. Yes. I'm like, oh, you know, Oppenheimer, it's like 95, yeah, yeah, yeah. probably not. Yeah, yeah, probably not. I'm like above you... 47. I'm like, this is my type of movie. <laughs> um, but, but <laughs> wait, really. <laughs> But so your movies, <laughs> but it's true. 73, which I think is a nice zone. It's a perfect zone. I think it's a nice zone. It's like movie critics like it. They don't hate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, it's not too much for people that aren't yeah. movie critics. The 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 hope for me in this movie, because I've done a bunch of these indies with Joe Swanberg and Trent O'Donnell. We did, you know, Win It All, Drinking Buddies, Ride the Eagle. By the way, Drinking these... Buddies, can I give a shout out right here, you guys? Please, please. If you haven't seen Drinking Buddies, one of my favorite movies, it's indie, you would say? Like it's an indie movie, you said? I wouldn't even just say that. It's indie, yeah. <laughs> We made it for like seven hundred thousand oh, dollars okay. in like sixteen need, days in Chicago. I need a glossary because, like, I I think people think that we know what everything means. Like, we don't necessarily know what that means. So here's here's what I mean by indie: independently financed, so that you don't have a major studio behind you, and you're not playing. So even this movie, my like my movie, Self Reliance, we filmed in seventeen days. So yes, we've got Anna Kendrick in it, and Andy Samberg, and Chris Lloyd. Look at me name dropping, uh, but. <laughs> Uh, but to me, it's an indie movie. We had 5 million bucks in 17 days and we didn't have a big machine behind us. When you go to the bigger movies you've seen in the cinemas, a lot of these movies are over hundreds of millions of dollars in budget. Right. And they Wait, have when you say countless 5 days. million, is that yeah. including actors' salaries? Everything. Whoa. 5 million to turn in a finished product in post with deliverables. So you are done. There's not a penny more. So not only to get everybody there, but to make it, to edit it, to do screenings, to like have a test audience, which you have to pay for. Every penny needs to be done at 5 million. A lot of the movies people compare it to that they go see, 5 million doesn't even call like cover craft services. Mm, so so in your indie craft services bad. Wasn't great. I will yeah. say that. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I've done big movies, one of the nice things is the food is no joke. Where you're like, you're a local chef, my friend. <laughs> of course, I'll take more of the stir fried noodles, my king. And I don't care if I fit into these denim bottoms. This is why I'm here for this weird <laughs> soup thing. Uh, uh, but that's what I mean by indie, where you're, mm. you don't have the, those luxuries and you're fighting and scrapping to make the thing work. Wow. Uh, and there's something really fun about that. A lot of those movies are really going after film audiences and they're really going after critical acclaim because if you can get nominated or win an award, 
the belief is that will bring a lot of eyes to the movie. If you're at the Independent Spirit Awards, well, that used to mean your indies now getting attention. But I kind of feel more now people are trusting each other more and they're trusting podcasts and they're trusting uh, social media that you just have to reach people. And if people like it, they'll tell everybody. And if the goal is to get people to watch it. Yeah. Then the best way to go about it is just to get it in front of people and try to get them to like it. Yeah. Especially with social media and stuff. It's it's gotten it's wild. It's gotten way different. So congrats on that, on reaching number one on Hulu. You guys, self-reliance, you should watch it if you haven't seen it. It's also a super fun watch. It's not a three-hour Leonardo DiCaprio DiCaprio movie. It's an hour and a half, which is such a nice evening. You know what I recommend for it? Uh Uh-huh. If you're somebody who likes weed, Uh uh-huh. Take a little bit before. (laughs) If you're a wine drinker, have a glass or two. This is not a movie you need to have a cup of coffee and go like, everybody, it's time for me to like get to homework. You know, on certain movies that you're like, this you one's rewind an one. and like, yeah. yeah. And I need to act smarter than I am because I don't want to not get it. Yeah. The idea of this movie is that it's meant to keep pushing and pushing. It's a really manic pace. I'm trying to get people not to check their phones for literally 90 minutes, uh, but it is meant for fun. It is. I have to say, I laughed out loud at so many parts, even at parts where I felt like it wasn't moments to make you, you like laugh. When I, Just you, you like being... when I'm like trying to be like hot and cool, you're like, that's hilarious. What a goober. A lot of moments <laughs> that just were funny, like of you being you. Um, Anna Kendrick, how'd you get her on the movie? You know, I'd worked with her on drinking, but really quick. What's it? What do you got? A thing of gumballs behind you? Yeah. Those real gumballs. Uh huh. And you have the discipline not to just to go through that thing in a day I and a half. I actually don't. Yeah. But you know what? My husband, right. true story, and this is men, you guys, and you're all the same right. because that's what you are. Broke his tooth the other day. We had to go to emergency dentist because he ate six of them yeah. on like his bad tooth. Yeah. And I'm like, are yeah. you okay? <laughs> so, yeah, no, I don't. Good I for don't. You. Yeah. Those things would last in my house. I used to have a kid I grew up with whose mother used to put out uh, Skittles and M&Ms. Uh, I ate so many of them that she asked me to stop eating them once. <laughs> and I was, you know, a nine-year-old kid where she said, like, you're always welcome at our house, Jake. And I was like, thanks. And she goes, you can't just go into the dining room and eat all of them. And I literally was confused. I'm like, but why put them out? And then my mom had to say, like, in some families, they just put out candy as like decoration. And I'm like... What, what fucking galaxy are we in? That's where you go 45 as a nine-year-old. I go like, in what world? They're offering Skittles for you not to eat them? Yeah, here's a delicious sandwich to a starving person. What do we want you to do? Enjoy the smells. I'm eating the sandwich. Wait, did you have a good snack cabinet at home or you were no. deprived? Oh, you were deprived. You know, my mother was very uh, inconsistent. So there'd be like a, we're now a health food family. And she would yeah. have like a bunch of almonds. And then two days later, every we'd go to McDonald's and eat like kings and queens. But isn't it funny? My mom now with my son judges me every day. How are you with giving him that yeah. with my yeah. son? Yeah. yeah. I'm a mom. I know it's shocking because I look so young and childish. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say, gross, a 17 year old has a baby <laughs> and a long term husband, illegal illegal child um Uh, i'm I'm, you're not kidding though just to let everybody know he's not kidding he did think he did think (laughs) 100 you're not kidding um but she shames me all the time about the food that i give him and i'm actually buying like the new good stuff you know the organic stuff the whatever and i'm like what do you think you gave me because i do not recall salmon and broccoli because i still don't like those things so that wasn't happening you called me cookie monster I had to go like <laughs> on ladders to get the yeah, yeah, so yeah, like yeah. what are you remembering? Agreed. Why are Agreed. we not on the same page? You have twin girls. Yes. They're 10, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are they like Swifties? Uh yes, but really Olivia Rodrigo's the uh, big one. Oh. We're going to her concert in August. We bought early. Wait, Olivia Rodrigo, that's her she's for 10-year-olds or are your girls like advanced they we i don't know we uh we do a lot of music in the car i'm a big believer in bumping that music when we're driving to things and let's have a little bit of damn fun 
Yeah. And so we've experimented. They don't like my music. When I'll throw something on like Greg Brown, a wonderful singer songwriter. My daughter yesterday driving her home from a tutor went like, this is the worst thing I've ever heard dad. <laughs> And I was like, it is a beautiful commentary about life and America. And so as we've been dancing around, we came across uh, Olivia Rodrigo's first album. And it was something that they liked and I liked. So we went like, okay. Uh -huh. okay. That's cool. Right. So you have tickets yeah. to go. Yeah, we're going to go see her. So, but yes to Taylor Swift, but Olivia Rodrigo is the. Uh, she's the main event. I like that. She's the main event right now. I like that for them. Um. Were you sad when New Girl was over in 2018 or were you excited to start exploring new things? Uh, well, the the thing about New Girl when we were on TV was uh, we were not as popular as we are now. So the younger generation found the show during the pandemic uh, and liked it. And the my generation, uh, and you are the younger generation, my generation, when we had it on Fox, people were into it at the beginning. First season, they were like, oh, man, the sitcom's back. Season two was like, here we go. Like, we were going to award shows. Max and Zoe were getting nominated. The rest of us were in tuxedos. Uh, and we were like, I guess this is our life. I was like, it's not really. Max and I, like, presented at the Critics' Choice. I was like, man, this is not for me. But I guess this is our life now. And then season three came around and it all disappeared. And the audiences fell off. The critics stopped liking it. The town stopped celebrating it. And we just had a show that we found a groove of how we like to shoot it. And we had fun, but we knew each year our numbers kept dipping and dipping and dipping. So after season six, I think Liz Merriweather wrote to all of us and said, like, I think Fox is going to cancel us. Um, and if I would really like to finish what we started, I do think we have an audience that cares. Uh, if anybody's interested in like writing a letter to uh, Dana Walden at Fox, she's cool. She might listen. So Zoe and I and Liz all had like a letter saying like, can we at least finish it and wrap up the story? And Dana Walden said like, yeah, that's, you know, I believe there's an audience too. They're just not watching TV. Mm. And then it kind of went away, but it wasn't even, it was, you know, it wasn't even sad. It was, you know, like when you watch an older person finally pass away of natural causes. <laughs> You don't go like at 98, like, were you sad they died? You're like, well, yeah. of course. Yeah. But you weren't like, I don't see another 10 years for like Uncle Terry. Right. I got it. This feels like it's it. it and feels then like when the it. pandemic hit, you were like, Uncle Terry was only 60, <laughs> but he looked so bad. But you are right because people are watching it. I mean, I'm from, no, I'm, fr excuse me, I'm from when it was airing. I know okay. we thought I was 17. I hate to break it to you. But you're right. Younger people, right, in their 20s are now watching it. I mean, it's all Different. like TikTok and clips and like the whole thing, the whole thing. Yeah, but, but it's also, it's the podcast group. It's like people have seen it, talked about it and spread it. And now they're like, but also when we were on Men, for example, when it was on Fox, needed to always let me know that they watched it with their girlfriends and they didn't love it. And <laughs> I don't know why. I'm, I'm not kidding. It's not even a bit. The amount of time men, especially in New York, whenever I was in New York for press, what in a in a taxi or a pizzeria would have to go like, I'd be like, can I get a slice of cheese? And they'd be like, yeah, you that guy? And I would go, I need a little bit more details. And they're like, my wife makes me watch the show with the girl living with all you guys. And I'd go like, yeah, I'm him. And they would go, I don't like it. <laughs> I'd go like, like, okay. Yeah, like, not for not for me, man. But my wife and my daughter loves it, and I'd go like, okay. And then when it came on Netflix, men of that generation liked it too. So I was like, oh, now we're we didn't have that. Yeah. So people I'm like, are, okay, yeah. interesting. I wonder, people I wonder change, what, right? People change, like the psychology of like admitting you like something. That's like what? It's just different. They just like the show. They think it's funny. It is so funny, and it still is. I love it so much. Um, I wanted to ask you, I saw a story about the couch dent, which really does relate to you yeah. being a comfort guy. And I feel yeah. like it's important for my audience to hear this, this story in case they missed it. Okay. Uh, okay. So... okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. By the way, 
the couch that yeah. Jeremy Allen White sat Jeremy on. Jeremy Allen White. He won all the things for the bear. Oh, yes. Okay. He sits on the same couch in that show? <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. No. There, there's a butt crease for him? No, Isn't he always but... moving around? He's been in the kitchen. <laughs> no. Isn't he listen, an intense chef? Wait, listen. It, this all hmm. relates okay, to connects, everything we're connects. talking about. We're like, a, yeah. it's like well, this is a really good Ooh. lesson because he's doing the Calvin Klein. He just did a huge Calvin Klein ad. H- handsome, talented man. The world is his. Yeah. And he sat on the couch for one of the boxer shoots. Hmm. They're auctioning that couch off because he sat on it for a lot of money. I don't know. It would be a better story if I knew. What I'm saying is your couch. Well, it, dead, depends on, it depends on the auction. And I'll tell you why. If it's a $2,500 couch and they're auctioning it for 2,500 bucks, you might just want the couch. <laughs> you might go, hey, this is a beautiful couch. I don't care if some naked guy sat on it. I'll clean the fucking thing. Just like if you go like flea market picking. Now, if they're trying to get $100,000, you go like, I can get the same couch. Right. And I can pay couch, somebody to sit on it in their underpants. Your couch, the Nick yes. Miller Bud Dent oh, couch. Yeah. So tell it, tell us what, what well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what didn't happen. And it's nobody auctioned to buy it. <laughs> and I know that is a fact. It's literally I believe it was thrown out weeks after. Production. Aww. Yeah, it was not. Wait, this is where Jake Johnson's <laughs> fat ass sat so much that it created a, a crease in the leather. <laughs> Dude, send it. Everybody wants to buy it. It's a huge story. <laughs> not didn't happen. Didn't happen and shouldn't happen. Uh so that story is when we started that show uh, where an actor. So the, the reason I told that story is they had asked, uh, what do you uh, like about directing? And what I like about directing is the reason I wanted to direct is that when you do TV a lot, you get certain great directors and certain directors who aren't perfect. And the problem with TV is that you have your cast, you have your writers and you have your crew and you all know each other really well. And there's about a hundred of you. And you guys all become in the same bit world, right? You work together 12 hours a day, five days a week. So you start doing jokes with the same people that when you walk into work, a camera operator or the sound person or the wardrobe, they're all doing the same thing. We all know what this thing is. And then you've got a director who comes in and if they have a different tone or vibe on set, we all have to listen. Yeah. So it's almost like you have a big extended family And then one of your parents gets remarried and whoever that person is, is now the most dominant figure of your family. Wait, but can I ask why directors were changing every week? Is that how it is in in TV? That's how TV is. Every week there's a new director. Why? Why don't they keep like one person? So in the new world of like cool streaming shows, they're starting to do it more like movie directors. You know, Mike White directs all of White Lotus. Right, right. Yeah. So it makes sense why it's all so good. It's like you're on a Mike White set. Yeah. Television, every week a new person comes in. So Monday morning when you get to set, you have to be like, hi. And they're like, hi, I'm Jerry. I'm your new dad. First of all, eat your carrots. (laughs) And you go like, easy, Jerry. We just met. No, that sounds (laughs) And everybody knows old fat boy doesn't eat carrots in the morning. It's awful. Now, if you got the right director, they come in and they fit right in and they add to it. That's a great step parent. And pretty soon you go like, you are my dad, (laughs) right? (laughs) And you love him. (laughs) So the butt story came because when we did that pilot, at first directors will say like, go where your character feels like going. And some actors take it very seriously and they're like, hold on, I got to feel my character. I can't even think of cameras. (laughs) <laughs> right. My character would walk this way and you go like, well, you're walking away from the lights, my king. So can you can your character walk, but can face that way? And my character, very similar to Jake. My characters are all interested in comfort. Right. So while we're creating the characters, why not add comma likes to be comfortable? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We're all inventing. It's all yeah. make believe. So we're in the living room and there's a couch and there's a section of the couch where you can put your legs up. We haven't shot anything. Why wouldn't Nick like to put his legs up? Why wouldn't Nick always be drinking a beer? Because I'll tell you what's in a beer on a TV set. Fresh soda water because it's carbonated. Ah. Delicious. So they fill up beer bottles 
with soda with with soda water so it's got the little bubbles in it oh. but you know to be a good actor you should eat and drink in scenes a little bit make it realistic uh -huh. you got it no problem right so i sat down in a seat we do the scene it works well i ended up sitting in that same seat so many times that by like season six uh somebody pointed out i think it was hannah simone that she was sitting there in a scene i wasn't there and was like ew gross <laughs> <laughs> there's Jake's butt creases. And the reason that I bring up the director is sometimes we would start a scene and we would sit and I would sit in my little butt crease and the director would go like, no, 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 Jake, I had an idea. You're going to be standing. Zoe, you're going to be in that corner. And my thought would be like, you can literally see where my butt crease should sit. That's going to be my seat. And so that was the uh, crease uh, couch story. That's so funny. So what did you take from like not liking the changing directors into you directing? Yeah. Well, what, I, what, what I took from that was we started pushing to get the same people back. Like Aaron O'Malley was one of our producers who ended up directing a lot of episodes. Trent O'Donnell was a guest director. And by the end, he ended up directing like 50 episodes. So you start really fighting to get certain people back and you try to get them to be producing directors. And the other thing that I truly don't like about a guest director is to be a director, most directors, a lot of directors have really big egos, right? It's why they want to do it. It's like being a quarterback of a football team. And so they think that their taste is make or break for the project. And I fundamentally believe that TV and movies are about collaboration. So you know, for my movie, like the set design, like those, you know, when I go into that big room and the murals all throughout the walls and the look of that room, mm -hmm. well, Grace Alley was a, we had had a different person we were going to hire for production design and I had a Zoom with her and she was just so hungry and great and pitching and had all these images and it was different than the image in my head. And I thought like, I think yours is better. So I'm not only am I going to hire you, but when? And if we're debating something, have reasons. So if it's a debate, you win the debate. Like because you're not really into want... just calling all the shots because you're directing. I want I want best idea wins. So if you come in and your ideas are soft, then I'll steamroll you because I am going to get it done. But what mm -hmm. I love is when somebody comes in, takes over their department and crushes it. And what I hate is when someone's crushing it and a director goes, no, 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 no. Let's have them yellow. And, you, and my thought is like, no, the other one was better. Green was better. And then somebody goes, why? Because the they decided to paint it green. They go, yeah, well, I just got to trust gut. And because they're the director, that wins. Mm. And I personally don't like that. Mm -hmm. So what was really nice was having more of the ability to let people come in. I also don't care if an actor is word perfect. I'm not Billy Shakespeare. If you want to say something a little differently and it works better, Right. Emily Hampshire, the sister in it, wrote a bunch of jokes for her character. She came in with like pages of alt jokes. And I was like, let's pick the three best and try them. They all made it into the movie. I know her character. I was like, I want to play that character. She was just like, yeah, she's so funny. She was just there just looking at you like you're a piece of shit, you know? Yeah, just exactly like, right. Just what are you doing? <laughs> just like yeah, her just facial expressions like towards you were... <laughs> I think that's what I enjoyed most about the movie is like, you're in this, everyone's looking at you. You're like, you're fucking crazy. Yes. And you're, you don't, you're just in it. Like, well, I wanted to make two movies, a movie from my point of view and a movie from everybody else's point of view. And my point of view was I'm a hundred percent right. I'm in a thriller and I don't care if you think I'm right or wrong. <laughs> this is the movie I'm in. This is life and death. And this is goddamn serious. And yeah. then I wanted everybody else to be in a movie about their brother or their friend is a bit of a goober and he's going through a weird phase. Right. With the, and to with me, the that mix. Yeah, that mix was really fun. I wanted to combine Jacob's Ladder and like Bottle Rocket. Oh, right. You said like sushi and pasta. Sushi and pasta. <laughs> I wanted to see how it felt. And it was, you know, look, it was a grind. I'm the one when you when you said earlier you can do it again. And I said, no, I was just texting with Lamorne about a movie. And I just said, like, I don't want to direct another movie because it feels like a marriage. When you do a movie as a director, you have to marry it and you have to like commit to it. And I had told this story before, but we were at the premiere party and there were executives saying like, what's next? 
And it honestly feels as insane to me as somebody saying to me about like my wife, who we've been together since 2004, we have two kids and them saying like, so your kids are now 10, you know, they're going to, things are going well. Like they got it all figured out. Who's the next wife? <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? So by next Wednesday, you and your wife and that family are officially done, but view it as a success. We like the numbers, 73% and number one on Hulu. We've won. And a nice profit. We sold it for a nice clip. So the next wife, are we thinking three kids? Really? You have two girls. Do you want a boy? And I'm like, I'm still in this fucking thing. Really? This isn't how it works. And if I'm going to break on. up, yeah. it's going to take years. And then I need to go through like really bad phases of like, who are you dating? Like somebody, everybody in my life hates. Why? <laughs> She's a genuinely terrible person. Why are you with her? I don't know. She hits me. <laughs> like, I got to go through those phases where you're like, is that a scratch on your face, Jake? And I was like, no, it was an argument that I started. <laughs> I'm trying to read this. I'm trying to understand. So you are like, you don't see yourself directing again. You're still married to this. You don't see you letting go, making something as good that you're as passionate about. But I saw or, you or, say that or what? No, you go. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, <laughs> I saw you say that you would do a pilot. Why yeah, a, do pilot? a pilot? Why a pilot? Because a pilot, because I would also do commercials. Uh, and I'll tell you why. So a commercial is like uh, an unbelievable 80 hour fling where you're like, I went through an early breakup. What's going on? I don't know. Like, she's amazing. What happened? It fell apart by Wednesday. But from Friday until like Tuesday, it was great. And I thought there was something to this. But then we both decided it wasn't it. That feels like a commercial. You go really intense. You build this thing. You create a, you build a crew. You get a cast. You shoot it. You try your hardest. You cut it and it's over. Mm -hmm. A pilot is like a really nice rebound. Mm. It's a legitimate relationship. You care about each other, but at the end, you both go, look, we both have kids and we're not going to Brady Bunch this fucking thing. So what are we doing here? Should we just stay in touch and stay friends? And every once in a while, we might take some like weekend trip to Mexico together. Sure. But it's not another marriage and it's not a restart. And so that's kind of how I see it. I'd be looking for more of a pilot with the right one, maybe be in it, maybe not, you know, something single cam, something that looks good. Something that looks like a film, but it would be really funny and really fun. Uh, that could be really neat because then I could build the crew and we could shoot it how I'd like to shoot it. And the vibe of set would be something I could really believe in and want to spend a lot of hours and hopefully a lot of seasons in. Uh, but the idea of doing another movie that you start, you build, you raise money, you cast, you film, you edit, you go back to the festivals. And I'm like, here I am, my sophomore feature. No, the first one was at South by Southwest. Here we are in Toronto. Guys, first of all, I need to thank my financiers. Thank you and pass. And then another press junket where they're like, self-reliance was a wild ride. This one's a romantic comedy. Tell me why. And I went like, well, I really thought, what was it? I can't do it. I don't have it in me. I don't have it in me. You know, when you said, oh you God. said, tell that story. And I said, okay. Oh yeah. You weren't happy about it. Well, no, it's because I'm rapidly becoming a character from Showbiz Pizza, one of those those characters, where or Chuck E. Cheese, where you go like, all right, everybody's here. No. Turn on the characters, and they go like this, like, so let me tell you about my movie. No, but that makes like, me feel bad that I made no, you feel that way. it's not you. It's the goddamn process. This is what it is. These are the stories. I don't have unlimited stories. I got to be 11. <laughs> That's not true. You gotta did tell you the ever, same story. Wait, you did you tell ever the tell story. the Times Square story before? Never. But I will yes. say this. Yeah. You're right. But I will say this in terms of looks and photo shoots. When you said when I first started, this is not something that I've talked about, but it is something other actors have teased me about. When I was doing the early New Girl things, photographers all want big energy for some reason. So you're in a tuxedo, you're doing the dance, you're waiting in line. And then it's your moment on like the red carpet moment. And nowadays they'll go like, we're going to push in on you. Do you know what you're going to do? And a lot of actors are like, well, whatever. I'm like smoking a cigarette. I'm cool. And then it gets to them and they're like, so big energy. Right. And then they all look at it and in slow motion, they're like, super dope, super dope. What I always say is I got three looks. 
Uh -huh. I make the same three facial expressions in every photo I've ever taken. And I'll just tell the photographer, which one do you like? <laughs> there's, there's, and there's. I don't think That's they it. Would like the second one. I got to tell you, they don't like any of them. <laughs> That's why they go, thanks so much, Jake. Let's go to the next person. That's why one of the, one person's couch is being auctioned and the other one's in a dumpster. <laughs> I mean, I feel like hashtag regret you didn't keep that couch for your backyard solo house. Yeah, uh, my cabin's way too small for that big couch. Oh, okay, the cabin is too small. Oh my God, Jake Johnson, you fucking kill me. Really an honor you were on the pod. Truly. Well, uh, let me talk about the, let me talk about my pod first. Oh, second. you want to promote you more things? Fine. <laughs> yes. Fine. <laughs> well, let me do plug in this showbiz pizza gorilla and let me play my guitar Jake, for a second. Jake, Jake, tell us uh, about your podcast. We're here to help. Oh, thank you so much for asking. I yeah. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're having a lot of fun. It is an advice call-in show. And next time you're in Los Angeles, maybe you'll join us. Mm, I'd love to. Would you? Yeah, duh. How often do you come to LA? Like when work calls. Okay. So next time you're in, maybe you'll come out. We're having a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun guests. We do you do it in your shed? Do you do it no, in your we, cabin? No, we we're now in a studio in Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. We started in the uh, shed. Uh, no, I started in this room. Mm-hmm. And then uh, enough people called us who are into this world more and said, like, your, your audio is great. And we're doing great audio numbers. They're like, your video is so bad, man. And you sit so close to the camera on your computer and you're not adjusting. So you so go to so a you studio. did a setup. You see, I have like a professional setup now. We've got We've got a, a setup. And I will say it is more fun than I expected it to be. It it's fun, fun to go because it feels like a live show. You get the energy. Uh, having different guests coming in. We we don't know what the calls are going to be until they come in. So they're live to us. And so and there's the adrenaline give rush of real it. advice or like funny real yes. advice. Both. I mean, look, I we give uh, the best advice we can, but the, my partner Gareth is very similar to me in that neither of us are straight shooters. But the whole premise of the show is we are on the team of the caller. So the idea of it is if you go to a bar with your friends, and you go, I'm in a really bad situation. Like, we don't take anything serious. We don't want to hear about divorces or diseases. We're not your guys for that. <laughs> but if you got something stupid, like, you know, a woman <laughs> called me the other day and said, like, look, this is a real problem for me. My husband flosses his teeth in the living room, and it's disgusting. Mm. Uh, and that's the, the reason he does it is he would, that's, and his, the reason we go, and we get back to her, we go, why? And he goes, he was raised that way by his family. So we're like, ah, so now we're pitching of how to get this woman out of this fucking nightmare she is. And that is a man flossing his teeth in the living room. That's the vibe. So it is never, you know, politically, I'm feeling really divided. I'm not, don't pass. Wait, do, we do they call? So fun. do you, do you listen to the. They, we screen them. We screen okay, them. Oh, the so producer it's not live. screens them all. Okay. okay. No. So they bring Everything in the good is screened. Stuff. Yes. So we do, we've got, uh, everything is screened. So by the time it gets to us, mm -hmm. they're already slightly curated so that they're coming in gunning mm. and it's gotta be fun. But here's what I'm going to ask your listeners if they listen. Okay. Or if they Whenever don't people li start listening. Now we're talking, look at you, you pro. Whenever people start, they go back to episode one and they start that way. Fundamentally wrong. Start at the latest and then go the other direction because you get better as it goes. It's not in chronological order. Do you agree? Oh my God. If you listen to my first podcast, my voice was probably 18 levels octaves higher, you know? Right? Yeah. I and you learn what your show is. You learn how to do it. That's the beauty of a podcast. There's the development is in real time. There's no executives. There's no notes. It's just making it as you go, which I find really fun. I'm but so when happy. people come to our show, they always start at the beginning. And my thing is, is reverse the way you listen to the podcast. How do you know? How do you know where they're starting? How do you know? Because I, I, I study the analytics. Oh, damn. Oh, right. We forgot. Oh, you're yeah, like, love you're it. like the work thing. Oh, I love it. You, you take I'm an that. animal with it. I love oh, it. Oh, really? Oh, my God. In every aspect. Huh. Every day with this movie, the whole read, like studying it, figuring Figure it out, talk to Hulu, but I love it. I'm that with it with everything. Oh. Huh. 
What an interesting guy you are, Jake Johnson. <laughs> no, really. I mean, the vibes, the vibes, and, you know, I love it. You didn't disappoint me at all. No. Thanks. Same. I really enjoyed <laughs> chatting with you. Thank you. Me too. Everybody, <laughs> what? did you not? I'm serious. You guys, so Self Reliance on Hulu, we're here, we're here to help podcast. Listen to it. Yeah, we're talking. Not yes. chronologically. And what's next? Is yeah, the podcast now your oh. your passion po- project or is there well, other stuff coming up? There'll always be. I'm, also, Sony wants me to bring up Spider-Verse is back in theaters this Friday. Wait, wait, wait. Right. They're bringing it back. They're bringing it back. I saw it in theaters with my son. Uh, so not, that's not happening. Not, okay. not how, recommended how to take it. How old is the boy? Yeah. No, no, no. Not. He like ran out. Too young. He's yeah, yeah he's yeah. three. Um no, he loves <laughs> Spider-Man. But the long form, the long yeah, form yeah. didn't work. But yeah, 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 I yeah. saw an article <laughs> I felt like was so perfect for you where they were like, even <laughs> his Spider-Man, uh, even his his Peter Parker is in sweatpants. Like even the exactly. the animated version. <laughs> even a, even an animated one <laughs> is in yeah, sweatpants. I mean, well, let's nice. be honest. It's it's been a gross career. <laughs> this will be one where they look back at, and you'll look back at the guy from the bear and you'll be like, makes sense. What a beautiful career. You look back at Margot Robbie and you'll go, one of our biggest stars. We love her. You'll look back at Gosling and you'll say like, glad we had him when we had him. Then somebody will go, remember the fat guy from new girl who just greased around for 15 years. And everyone will go like, Ugh, what a stain on the industry. It's like, you know, when you eat pizza in New York and you put a plate on top of it and you go like, I can see through the plate. There was so much grease. Uh-huh. I think that's the mark I'm leaving behind in Hollywood. Just an 18 year grease stain. Jake Johnson could talk to you forever. Thanks again for Appreciate coming on you. my show. Truly an honor.